Hello viewers, we are going to discuss an important topic of uh, MCOM first semester business environment courses. The topic is industrial sickness. This discussion will be divided into three parts. Part one will discuss the meaning and definition of industrial sickness and parameters of signals of sicknesses. Part 2 will be discussed about the causes of industrial sickness and part 3 will include effects of industrial sickness and remedial measures to be taken to, uh, to be prevent industrial sickness. Coming to part 1, let us uh, know the meaning of industrial sickness. Sickness in industry is a universal phenomenon. It is one of the most complex problems of the Indian economy. In India, the term sick units refers to economically unviable farms which are kept alive in the public interest. Mind it, in the public interest, those are uh, kept alive by means of subsidies of various kinds. In spite of different measures taken by the government, the problems still persist. Sick units not only lose their net worth, but they also lose capital raised from uh, sources other than ownership. The government of India enacted special legislation to tackle this problem. The Sikh Industrial Companies Special Provision Act was enacted in 1985 with the objectives of timely detection of sick units. Apart from determining sickness, the main objectives of the Act, that is Sika Act, are to expedite the closure of unviable units and the revival of potentially viable units. However, the Sika was replaced later on and the revival and rehabilitation of sick companies are now dealt with the Companies Act 2013. Now coming to the definition. Different bodies have given different definitions of industrial sickness. According to Reserve Bank of India, a sick unit is that which has incurred a cash loss for one year and is likely to continue incurring losses for the current year as well as the following year and unit has an imbalance in its financial structure. According to this definition, if we look minutely, if an industry has incurred loss in the previous year, likely to incur loss in the current year and probability of loss in the second year, uh, in the next years, then the industry may be treated as sick industry. Such type of industry also faces financial structure imbalances. The next important definition of uh, sick industries are given by SICA itself, the Sikh Industrial Companies Act 1985. According to this definition, a Sikh industrial unit is an industrial company being a company registered for not less than seven years, which has at the end of any financial year accumulated losses in that financial year and in the financial year immediately preceding it. This definition has also covered the angles covered by the definition given by Reserve Bank of India. However, According to this definition, a company that has not been completed seven years of its registration cannot be treated as sick industry. It means they assume that up to seven years a company may be secure loss, but after seven years it should be uh, get profit. Now the question arises, how will we know? that an industry is sick. The industry itself gives some warning signals that indicate that 
it is becoming sick. The most significant warning signals are to be discussed first. The first warning signal of the of a sick industry is shortage of liquid funds. An enterprise facing shortage of liquid funds uh, cannot pay for the purchase of raw materials and it delays the payment or uh, a payment to its labor. Besides this, the industrial unit in all violation of legal provisions stops meeting its statutory obligations such as contributions to employees provident fund, payment of tax, etc. The second important signal of sick industry is the growth of excessive inventories. Excessive accumulation of raw materials and failure in selling of finished goods is another warning signal of industrial sickness. Inventories need to be converted into cash. Piling of inventories causes serious problems in managing working capital. The next symptoms is non-payment of interest and installments. Non-payment of interest on term loans or non-payment of installments is another signal of impending uh, sickness. Timely payment of loans is very important. Defaulting payments damage the relationship with the banks or the other financial institution. The next signal is underutilization of capacity. If a farm is not able to utilize its machineries, labor force, land and buildings, etc., up to their capacity, it treat its survival. For its survival, every unit of production must cross the break-even point by utilizing its full capacity. Underutilization of capacity has lots of hidden costs for the farm. This needs to be avoided. The next important signals of industrial sickness is less return on investments. A comparison of the rate of return with the prevailing rate of interest is indicative of the health of the enterprise. For obtaining rate of return on investment, the net profit as a proportion of the total investment in the enterprise has to be taken. The last signals a sick industry shows that unfavorable financial ratios. Various financial ratios calculated on industry are to be favorable. As for example, if the ratio of current assets to current liabilities is less than 1 is to 1, an enterprise is considered as sick. It indicates losses and declining liquidity of the firm. A declining debt a declining debt equity ratio indicates movement towards sickness. After discussing those uh, signals, we can summarize that the vital parameters to be categorized a firm as sick unit are number one, continuously facing shortage of finance. Number two, continuous default in repaying the dues of industry, continuous default in repaying the installments which have fallen due and continuous losses. If an industry shows these signals, that industry may be treated as sick industries. Now, hello viewers, coming to the part 2 of this discussion, in this part I will, we will discuss about causes of industrial sickness, why industrial sickness occurs. The various causes of industrial sickness may be broadly divided into two types, internal and external causes. Internal causes are created inside the farm or the industry. The farm may control over them. The firm may control those internal causes. The external causes are created outside the firm. The firm does not have control on such causes. Now coming to internal causes. 
The first internal cause of sickness is lack of finance. Lack of finance is one of the main cause of industrial sickness. Weak quality based poor utilization of assets, inefficient working capital management, absence of costing and pricing, absence of planning and budgeting, and inappropriate utilization of diversion of funds, etc. creates this problem. Another in internal cause of sickness is bad production policies of the farm. Bad production policies include wrong selection of site, inappropriate plant and machinery, bad maintenance of plant and machinery, lack of quality control, lack of standard research and development, etc. The next one is marketing problem. Marketing problem is also an internal cause. Wrong demand forecasting, selection of inappropriate product mix, absence of product planning, wrong market research methods, and bad sales promotions, etc., may result in sickness of the farm. The next one is inappropriate personnel management. Inappropriate personnel management like bad wages and salary administration, bad labor relations, lack of behavioral approach causes dissatisfaction among the employees and workers, and it may be cause of industrial sickness. The next one is ineffective corporate management. Ineffective corporate management is another internal cause. Improper corporate planning, lack of integrity in top management, lack of coordination and control etc. may lead to industrial sickness. The causes that have been discussed above were internal causes. The first the farm has control over those factors. Now we will discuss about uh, external causes of sickness. Coming to external causes, one of the most important external cause of industrial sickness is personal constraint. Sometimes skill levers or manpower needed for the industry may not be available in the market. Not availability of skill labor or manpower creates personal constraint in the industry. The next external cause is marketing constraints. The sickness may arrive due to liberal and tough licensing policies, restraint of purchases by bulk purchasers, changes in global marketing scenario, excessive tax policies by the government, and market precision, etc. The next one is production constraints. Production constraints is another reason for sickness which comes under external cause of sickness. This arises due to shortage of raw material, shortage of power, high price of fuel, import-export restriction, etc. Finance constraints is an another important external cause for the sickness, especially for uh, small-scale units. This arises due to credit rest restraints policy delay in distribution, delay in disbursement of loan by the government, unfavorable investments, fear of nationalization, etc. One of the most significant external causes of industrial sickness is energy constraints. Energy crisis arising out of power cuts or shortage of coal and oil have been a serious problem for many industrial units. Next one is shortage of raw materials. Inability of the units to achieve optimum capacity due to shortage of raw materials, poor agricultural output due to uh, natural regions, etc. are uh, included in shortage of raw materials. Infrastructural problems arising outside the industry like transport facility, etc. may also influence in industrial sickness. Next one is artificial economic constraints like government control of product mix and prices, competition faced by the unit and excess capacity in the industry also may cause industrial sickness. There may be some other problems like shortage of working capital, 
liquidity constraints, etc. That may cause industrial sickness. Both internal and external causes of industrial sickness discussed above may be further divided into bone and a shift categories. Bone causes are created at the very beginning of the establishment of the farm, while the acid causes are earned by the farm itself during its operation. Now coming to the bone sickness. First, bone sickness is wrong project selection. If an industry does mistake in selecting the project, it may lead to sickness later on. Lack of experience on the part of the promoters, wrong selection of the project, faulty project planning may give birth to uh, sick units. Next one is location problem. It is an another important bond cause of sickness. For example, a high technology based projects being based in area without skill labor or supporting infrastructure may cause sickness. The next one is delay in supply of necessities. Delay in supply of equipment, slippage in the schedule of civil works, etc., may cause cost escalations leading to the uh, leading to liquidity issues and capital shortage. It is also an important bond cause of industrial sickness. The next one is scarcity of funds. Industry that started with scarcity of funds and faulty financial management from the very beginning of its inception may also lead to sickness. The next one is technological problem. Technological factors like selection of absolute and improper technology or outdated technology while project is being executed, wrong collaboration etc. also can create industrial sickness. Next one is incorrect market assessment. Incorrect assessment of the market potential or faulty demand forecasting, change in market conditions etc. also cause industrial sickness. Now we will discuss the factors lead to under industrial sickness which are earned by the industries during their day-to-day -day operations. They are called ACIF sickness. Number one, ACIF cause of sickness is bad management. Bad management that is inexperience, inefficiency, lack of professional expertise, etc. Poor production management, poor labor management, poor resource management, etc. are also uh, belong to the bad management problem. According to Tiwari committee report, about 65% of the large un sick units were affected by this problem. Next one is unnecessary expansion. Sometimes unnecessary and unwarranted expansion and diversion of resources also causes sickness. Another chief cause of sickness is poor inventory management of finished goods as well as the inputs. Next one is unable to face the changing environment. Failure to modernize the productive apparatus, change the product mix to suit the changing environment. Hence, it may create sickness. Last but not the least, poor labor management relationship and the associated poor worker moral and low productivity is also an important cause of industrial sickness. In this part, we have discussed about the various causes of industrial sickness. In the next part, we will discuss about uh, effects or consequences of industrial sickness. Hello viewers, coming to part 3. In this part, we will discuss about uh, the effects or consequences of industrial sickness. Uh, industrial sickness may, causes, may cause serious consequences in an underdeveloped labor surplus economy like India. It is a serious problem that has affected the small, medium and large industries. It not only affects owners, employees, creditors and suppliers, it causes wastage of national resources and create social 
unless. Therefore, sickness is a matter of serious national concern. The first consequence of sickness is underutilization of capital assets. Underutilization of capital assets is a drain on the capital of any nation. It is very much affects the capital formation process of less developed and developing countries. Sickness also causes declines the level of entrepreneurship. Increase in industrial sickness discourages entrepreneurship. In economics, land, labor and capital are referred to as the factors of production. It is only entrepreneurship of product uh, of project promoters that brings together the factors of production for uh, accomplishing the task of nation building. Next one is investors confidence. Sickness influence in investor confidence. The investor confidence reaches lower flow, thus capital is not put to the productive use. The next consequence is unemployment. Industrial sickness results in large-scale unemployment and industrial unrest. Another important consequence of industrial sickness is uh, it affects profitability. Profitability of banks and financial institutions gets affected since they do not get back their funds invested in the projects that have gone sick, nor do they earn interest on their invested funds. Another consequences is threatening industrial environment. Sick industries threatens the industrial environment. Uh, widespread labor unrest threatening industrial environment in the country. The enterprises lose morale to sustain their activities. Wastage of resources is another consequence of industrial sickness. Wastage of huge resources invested in these sick units. Therefore, those wasted resources influence in the uh, economy uh, at a large scale. Another important consequence of industrial sickness is impact on other related units. Creating adverse impact on the other related units, closure of one industrial unit affects its suppliers and distributing uh, firms. Financial loss to banks causing the huge financial losses of banks and other lending institutions locking up funds in these sick units. Now, coming to the preventive measures to be taken to tackle the problem. So many measures to be taken for revival or uh, tackle the problem of industrial sickness. Whenever the business environment becomes uh, congenial, the enterprise should look for, for formulation and implementation of some uh, turnaround strategies. Turnaround strategies involves in management review, root failure cause analysis, and short analysis to determine why the enterprise is failing. Once the analysis is completed, a long-term strategic plan and restructuring plans are to be created. Some of the measures to, adopt, to be adopted to prevent and correct industrial sickness are number one, creation of financial resources. The industrial unit should pay special attention towards creation of financial resources. The short-term capital should not be used for medium-term or long-term investment. Next one is developing managerial skills. The managerial skills should be developed by providing training to the entrepreneurs of small-scale industries, industrial units. The next one is government efforts. Government efforts are more important to prevent uh, industrial sickness. The government should afford priority in allocation of scarce raw materials, extending marketing assistance and granting a certain rebates and concessions to small units and more as to such units which show better record of performance. 
Next one is overhead and cost of capital should be reduced. The cost of capital should be reduced and effort should be taken to reduce overhead cost in SSI units. The next one is proper use of funds. Funds should be should not be utilized elsewhere other than the industry, uh, other than the uh, units, other than the farms. The next one is inventory management. Industrial units should maintain inventories at optimum level so that cost should be reduced and it does not affect the scale of the industry adversely. Uh, last but not the least measures is proper guidelines. The Reserve Bank of India and other promotional organizations should issue guidelines for the smooth functioning of industrial units and to make professional management expertise available for small enterprises, entrepreneurs. In this discussion, we have covered various aspects of uh, industrial sickness. In the next discussion, we will have discussion about an, another important topic that is patents and trademarks. Thank you.